Seriously? Dread mobs are coming, baby. Hey, hey guys. Welcome to this news video with myself, Six Bus Stevo. So I am on the Warhammer community site and we have some rather exciting news. Uh, with this article, Fight Like an Orc, new detachment rules and what they do for you. So let's take a look at this. Just before we get started, uh, apologies that this video is a bit late. Um, GW always likes to reveal big, hard-hitting orc news in the my days of work that are just way too busy to be able to have time to even digest the information, let alone make a video on it. So you're probably all fully aware of this news. You've probably all seen videos covering this news already. But for those of you that are interested, this will be my take on it. So let's take a look. Uh, so let's click in there. So 8th of April, 24, Green Tides and the Dread Mobs. Thank you, GW. Dread mobs. That's one of the detachments. One of my on my. If you remember my video uh, a few months back uh, on my wish listing video, dread mobs was very much at the top of my list. Um, no surprises there. Um, so new orc detachments go back to their roots. In the last few editions, orcs have stuck to the fairly pro proscribed fighting styles of their clans, despite their anarchic nature which lent a measure of uncharacteristic order to their otherwise hooligan battle plans. That's true. Um, this started in 8th edition um, and carried on through 9th edition uh, with the um, clans, um, getting clan-specific detachments. Um, it was cool. Uh, it works for me, um, being exclusively bad moons. But uh, it is does go against what is typically makes up an orc war is a conglomeration. I think I said that word right. Uh, of all different clans coming together under one banner, this generally is the way orcs go to war. Um, not exclusively, you do get ex you know the orcs that would would stick to own clan. There's not really any hard and fast rules to it. But in, in a general sense, orcs go to war featuring. You know, multiple different clans within the WA. Uh, those days are no more, for the six detachments found in Codex or Orcs are far more concerned with the units they're using to crump gits rather than the colour of their shirt. And they have a lot of crumping to do. Of course they do. Uh, six detachments, that's good to hear, because I know I think some of the Codex don't have six. I think they've got less. Um, so that's cool. So we've got six different ways to play our Orcs. Right out of the gate, that's good news. Um, a rather nice uh, battle scene here with orcs uh, looking like a... It lo this looks like a little bit of a... It's a shame this isn't Crimson Fist because it's almost like a reverse of the... Uh, it looks like Orc Last Stand really. It looks like they're getting surrounded here but it looks... Uh, that's very cool. Very, very cool indeed. Um, so where do we start? The war. Oh, it's because of that explanation mark. I thought it was like a full stop. Hang on. So where do we start? The Wa tribe is back from the index, polished up and renamed the War Horde. I don't really like that name. I think they could have come something better than that. But it's the War Horde now. The Wa tribe is now the War Horde, which is effectively what we used to think of as like a goth detachment. So that would be your, your typical kind of fighty detachment. Um polished up and renamed so it means it won't be exactly the same they'll tweak it they'll they'll change it slightly i imagine it'll be mostly the same i think you'll probably still get the rule of like exploding sixes in combat and stuff so it'll be your, your typical kind of fighty list i guess um the new detachments let you field anything from a beast snagger hunting party to a death dread heavy mech mob don't worry we'll come back to that one but no self-respecting war would be complete without its near endless green tide of boys. Even the most basic orc is hard as nails to begin with, but when the mob mentality takes over, they can shrug off absurd amounts of punishment and keep their thunderous charge going. Again, another thing from my wish listing, um, a green tide detachment, it's 
it had to happen, didn't it? It's an obvious one. It's the, your classic orc list of boys before toys. So that's really cool to see that that's represented. Um, and they do go in to reveal some of that here. So we've got here the detachment rule for the green tide. Um, I think this is going to be great for snake bite players um, and anyone that just wants to run a full horde list. This is really cool. Um, so uh, caught up in the infectious and nigh supernatural belligerence that suffuses such large hordes of orcs on the warpath, the boys tend to push through lethal wounds, being too immersed in the energetic riot to worry about such things, as long as they have load of mates to enjoy the fight with. Each time an attack targets a boys unit from your army, models in that unit have a 5 plus invulnerable save against that attack. In addition, each time an attack targets an orcs unit from your army, if it contains 10 or more models, re-roll a saving throw of 1 made against that attack. This is really cool. Um, I've got some thoughts on this. Uh, it's it's a cool rule. 5 plus invulnerable save is brilliant. And then if you've got a really large mob, like over 10 models in that unit, um, you re-roll 1s. So that, that's really nice. That's making orcs... Uh, more resilient than they've ever been. Combine that with the toughness five and everything, because they're, they're pretty tough now. That's making a good hardy mob of orcs. So not only are you going to be fielding loads and loads of boys, but all those boys are going to be much harder to kill. That's very, very good. That's a very powerful unit. Um, it is just boys though, but obviously the list is encouraging you to collect boys um, and do that. So yeah, cool. Um, it does make me wonder though about um, the war rule itself because they haven't gone into that and currently what we've got is the war gives that 5 plus in bun save during the war so I wonder is the war special rule going to change or will this will it remain the same and then this rule kind of be surplus to requirements during the war I know if you've got large mobs you'll still be re-rolling those ones but that's where if the war rule remains the same this rule isn't quite as good because for one turn it's basically going to be irrelevant um but otherwise very very cool rule i like it green tide lists i think will be quite strong with this uh, as you might imagine the green tide green tide detachment is all about piling as many boys onto the battlefield as possible and overwhelming your opponent with sheer numbers its enhancements and stratagems are all about boosting units with at least 10 models in them, such as the Ferocious Show-Off Enhancement, which triples its strength boost when in a crowd. It even has a way to make sure all of those models get a chance in close combat, thanks to the Bulldozer Brutality Stratagem. Um, and these, these are quite nice, I've got to say. Uh, so we've got this one first, the Enhancement. So this is for one of your characters. Uh, this brutal fighter is even more dangerous with a raucous audience of chanting orcs as he displays his violent abilities as a warning to all. Orcs infantry model only. Each time the bearer fights, while resolving those attack attacks, add one to the strength characteristic of the bearer's melee weapons. If the bearer's unit contains ten or more models while resolving those attacks, add three to the strength to the strength characteristic instead. Um, sorry for my terrible reading, guys. Uh, GW do like to make incredibly wordy rules. Um, so we'll break this one down. Uh, basically, you give this enhancement to your character and he gets uh, plus one strength. Nice, nice. Not great on its own, that. Um, so while he's on his own or in a small unit, plus one strength, meh. They are better enhancements, but if he is leading a unit of 10 or more models while resolving, resolving those attacks, add 3 to the strength characteristic instead. This is very nice indeed. So if you've got your war boss, for example, leading a mob of 20 boys, um, that's going to be that's going to be tidy. Um, plus 3 strength. Very, very nice indeed. Um, and combine that with the army wide rule if he's in those boys they're all getting those five plus invul saves re-rolling ones as well so they get, they're quite hardy they're quite resilient plus they've got the boost to the combat here as well so yeah all in all i think if you're running the green tide this enhancement's probably going to be an auto include um yeah very nice then we've got this one this is very very good uh bulldozer brutality a green tide battle tactic stratagem uh, for one cp 
In the massive fights that orcs enjoy, the only way to ensure a slice of the action is to bludgeon a path through the press to get a hand on the enemy. When, in the fight phase, target one boy's unit from your army that has not been selected to fight this phase and, was in, and is within engagement range of one or more enemy units. Uh, the effect is, until the end of the phase, each time your unit is selected to fight, when determining which models in your unit are eligible to fight, any models in your unit that are within three inches of one or more enemy models are eligible to fight. When resolving those attacks, such models can target one of those enemy units that is within three inches of them and within engagement range of their unit. Wow, these rules are so wordy. Ugh. Basically, usually you've got to be within like one inch or whatever. It's within three inches. So if you've got a big mob of 20 boys or with two characters and they're 22 unit models, everything's going to get to fight, basically. This is really, really good. We've got larger base sizes now. We've got a smaller um, range to be able to get into combat. So sometimes you can charge in with big mobs currently and loads of them don't get to fight, which sucks. This addresses that for the bargain price of one CP. Um, when you hit with a full unit of 20 boys with two characters in there um, and they all get to hit during a war with all the other buffs going on, they hit like a fucking freight train. So this is going to be a, a stratagem that will be used all the time by green tide players. That's for damn sure. Very cool indeed. Uh, of course, this means that keeping your mobs topped, topped up is paramount, and the come on lads stratagem flexes regenerative, regenerative powers that would make a Necron jealous. Attach a pain boy to the unit for maximum durability, and give your hollering muscles a good workout as the boys thunder across the board, soaking up shots that would bring down tanks. So, another green tide stratagem, come on lads. Uh, 1 CP, Orcs are drawn to conflict and constantly race into battle at the nearest hint of violence. You use this in your command phase and you use it on a unit of boys. The effect is, return up to D3 plus 2 destroyed models to your unit, excluding character models. Beautiful, beautiful. Brings them back from the dead. Uh, you get a minimum of 3 come back, so 1 CP to bring back 3 boys, potentially 5 boys, very cool indeed um yeah uh, th what's not to like you get a big mob of 20 boys you sit them on an objective they start getting hit and shot you use this stratagem bringing a few of them back it's going to keep them in the fight um yeah again you combine this with the army wide um, ability of the invun saves you can bring things back from the dead like they said if you have a pain boy in that unit um, giving them the feel no pain as well or maybe a big mech with a kff no well that no the big mech okay <laughs> sore point <laughs> sore point yeah um a topic for another video perhaps um this uh if sheer numbers aren't your style you'd and you'd rather test your limits of orky ingenuity the dread mob is a great place to use that new big mech you definitely picked up in the stomper boys battle force um, I definitely didn't or won't be doing GW because I'm a bit tight on funds at the moment. I will probably wait for him to come out on his own. Uh, true tech head orcs are always eager to try that button with results that harken back to the good old days of randomised bonuses and occasional self detonations. Gamblers can let the dice decide what their gubbins do each turn or pick out a specific bonus at the risk of blowing up. Either way, the benefits this mechaniac expertise offers your mobs of death dreads killer cans and mech led lads makes it hard to resist tinkering under the hood so uh yeah let's look at this one this is good this is good so this is the dread mob detachment rule um i'm excited for this one very excited this is most likely going to be the detachment i usually use uh each time a mech Orcs Walker or Grotz Vehicle Unit from your army is selected to shoot or fight, roll 1d6. Until the end of the phase, weapons equipped by models in that unit have the corresponding ability shown in the table below. So we've got three different abilities here, um, and uh, they're all quite nice. Um, and it's just each time they fight or shoot. So, uh, when is it... Uh, 
each time is selected to shoot or fight. Right, so you don't just do this at the beginning of the turn, you do this in the shooting phase and in the fight phase. So it's something you're gonna to have to remember before these units, you know, this feels like a kind of rule that I'm gonna forget quite a lot. Hopefully not, but uh, hopefully I'll get in the uh, habit of doing it. Um, but yeah, it basically roll and get a randomized bonus to your death dreads in your killer cans and your mech. Um, so on a one to two, you get sustained hits one. Always, always good. More shots is lovely jubbly. Uh, well, more, more hits, isn't it? More hits. Very nice indeed. We like that. Sustained hits is very nice. It's always useful. Uh, and then we've got the lethal hits, which is cool. Just auto wound when you hit. Very nice. And then on five to six, each time an attack is made with this weapon on a critical wound, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by two. Um, this is nice. Um, I experienced this during ninth edition with the bad moon detachment things. Um, a similar rule anyway. Um, and it was good. It, it, it was very tidy, especially on things like big shooters and stuff that don't have any AP. If you And you can fire off a lot of shots and then you get in these bonus bits of AP. It can be nice. It, it can be very good. So yeah, all three of them, none of them are shit. There are some that are better than others, and in certain situations you're going to want one more than the other, but I think rolling this randomly and getting any of these is a nice bonus regardless. Um, but if you don't want to go random, uh, you've got this rule. Alternatively, when such a unit is selected to shoot or fight, you can select one of the abilities above instead of rolling the D6. If you do, until the end of the phase, weapons equipped by models in that unit have the hazardous ability as well. Cool. If you are shooting, I don't know, if you very specifically want one of these things, uh, you can take the risk and then make your weapon hazardous. Cool, I like that. That gives you some options. Um, if a weapon equipped by a model from your army has the hazardous ability from multiple sources, each time you take a hazardous test for that weapon, it is failed on a roll of a one or a two. So let's say, for example, you've got a mob of killer cans. No, a death dread with custom mega blasters that already has the hazardous ability so then if you choose one of these specific abilities then he's going to be triggering that hazardous on a one or a two not just a one um i think it's cool i think it's great um i think i might be tempted to do that from time to time and just really up the risk i don't know custom mega blaster with sustained hits would be nice that would be very nice indeed um yeah this this is a cool role um I notice here as well it says there are a few things I've noticed about this uh, and I grabbed I grabbed actually one of the uh, detachment cards earlier from the legends units because I was getting excited where it said a mech orcs walker or grots vehicle so where it says orcs walker I thought cool this will this will affect a uh, mega dread as well and grots vehicle I was like cool uh, grot tanks grot mega tanks etc um, I thought, cool, it's going to affect all them as well. However, currently, and I don't know if they're going to address this, but the Legends units don't have the keywords Orcs, Walker, or Grotz, Vehicle. They've got the keyword Grotz, and they've got the keyword Vehicle, but they're not Grotz, Vehicle, if you get me. So I don't know where it stands on this rule affecting Legends units currently. Hopefully it will, or possibly they'll tweak the keywords on the Legends units. I'm not sure. Um, it's going to be interesting. Going to be interesting to see. But currently, this would cover um, Grotz vehicle. Surely that will cover the uh, mech guns as well, because um, it doesn't say Grotz Walker. It just says Grotz vehicle. So hopefully, this does cover mech guns as well, which will be with some of them guns getting these bonuses on it. Will be that that that'll be good. That'll be very very good indeed. Um, I think lethal hits ability is going to be quite nice on Grotz vehicles because they've got that added ballistic skill, so they're more likely to hit anyway. So just turning those hits into wounds is very nice. It's just a, it's another hurdle you don't have to cross because each time you have to roll the dice, you're you're taking out more fails, aren't you? So avoiding having to roll for anything is good. So I think lethal hits will be quite nice with Grot units. Um, yeah, it's cool. I like it. Um, I've also noticed as well that it says. Um, where does it say in the bit that it said earlier? It said, uh, uh, oh, am I looking? Um, either way, yeah. Um, it benefits Death Dreads, Killer Cans, and Mech Led Lads. 
Uh, so it's not just the mech himself. Yeah, each time a mech unit from the army. So I, I, I think I'm thinking of this right, where they've said that and that. So if you attach your mech with a unit, the unit benefits from this ability. I hope that's the case. If that is the case, that's awesome. That would be really good. If you've got your mech leading like a unit of looters or something, uh, and then you can add one of these abilities on top of that, that's that's going to make... Uh, yeah, that's going to be good. So, yeah, overall, I'm very happy with that. I love the fact that it is, like they said in the bit earlier, it's bringing back that um, randomised nature and, you know, with a risk with it. That's so orky. That's brilliant. That's fluffy. I love it. Uh, besides since we're already riding the red line why not go all out and push it with the wonderfully named bigger shells for bigger git stratagem the sight of a killer can single-handedly blowing up a carnifex before exploding in turn is only going to like delight, delight your boys more i agree 100 percent um, these are the moments that games are made of if you can really up the risk factor and really just put everything into it and then destroy something but then your thing blows up as well it makes great moments Things like that in the game, that's what makes the game fun. Uh, so we've got our killer cans here. Uh, bigger shells for bigger gits. Dread mob battle tactic stratagem, one CP. Stashes of extra special ammo provided by the mechs are often expended on rival monstrosities. You use this in your shooting phase and you can use it on a mech, an orcs walker or a grotz vehicle. Um, the effect is, each time you use this stratagem, you can put, choose to push it. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack that targets a monster or vehicle, add one to the wound roll. Really, really nice. One CP, add one to the wound roll. That's powerful. That's going to really up your chances of being able to wound said monster or vehicle. Uh, if you choose to push it, add one to the damage characteristic of that attack. And until the end of the phase, ranged weapons equipped by models in your unit have the hazardous ability as well. Um, I say you push it every time. That's what an orc would do. Um, don't play it safe. Push it every time, people. Just fuck it. Just go for it. Um, I think strategically speaking and stuff, that's generally would be considered unwise just for the sake of getting one more damage and then posing a risk to yourself. But... We're orcs. Just do it. Do it every time, people. Every single time. Even if that risk could lose you the game, just do it. Just do it every time. Just go, yep, full power, overcharge, risk everything blowing up, go for it. You'll have a more fun game for it. Um, so, yeah, plus one to wound and then an extra damage. Nice. I think even if you've got, like, say you've got, like, a unit of uh, killer cans with can shooters, getting the plus one to wound on them, plus one damage... Um, it's it's going to make them a lot better wounding on a higher thing and then giving like two damage it's going to make those guns that aren't really that powerful uh, pack a lot more punch um, and yeah, using it on things like uh, custom mega blasters, rocket launchers and that is just going to make them weapons even more devastating especially targeting vehicles and monsters so this is fantastic for my dread mob, if they come up against a, an, a, another vehicle heavy list I've got options to use against them and up my chances of taking them out so this is a big win for me uh, that's only a grot sized handful of the rules you'll get to play with when Codex Orcs goes up for pre-order this Saturday and the other detachments are equally as bonkers. The Cult of Speed can give their trucks and buggies a 4 plus invulnerable save just by going extra fast. Again, this is a really old school fluffy rule from back in the day and I'm really glad they're bringing this stuff back. Um, the old we used to have in, I think like started, I think it started in like 4th edition or possibly 3rd, used to be able to get like turbo boost. Um, and uh, the, the fast vehicles um, used to be able to get, uh, you know, um, they were harder to kill um, in various forms. At one point they had an invun save, at another point you could only get a glance and hit on them and things um, back in the day uh, if they went a certain speed. Uh, so this is really cool. So yeah, just ram your trucks and buggies forward, give yourself a 4 plus invun. 4 plus invun's fucking beautiful. That's really good. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, while the new Bully Boys mob trades the quantity of boys for the quality of knobs <laughs> and gives them extra wars just for themselves wow so um cool so what does it do 
extra wires. This is this is nice, and this ties into some other bad news we've got um, with some characters going away. Um, apparently, the uh, the knob with wire banner will be going away, which is devastating news uh, because he had that ability, obviously, at granting extra wire. But it looks like knobs will at least within this Bully Boys detachment, to kind of get that ability themselves anyway, that they can call their own wars or something. Um, but this this is a nice list. If you really like this sort of, the idea of running an elite orc list and the Bully Boys, I like the way they call it Bully Boys, this is gonna be the perfect detachment rule if you're running Gazzy. Um, Gazzy's Bully Boys has always been a thing um, and just going for all the biggest and best stuff. Um, Mega Knobs, Knobs, Gazzy, war bosses in mega armor etc just making a real elite orc list that's going to be cool um so yeah i think a lot of people are going to be really um keen on that one now i wonder it is the trades the quantity of boys for the quality of knobs now if they do that detachment right what it should do is make knobs battle line so you could have six squads of knobs they should do that whether it does do that or not i don't know hopefully they have done that um, but yeah, so we've got Cult of Speed, we've got Bully Boys, we've got Dread Mob, we've got Green Tide, and we've got the War Horde. That's five detachments revealed. Um, they didn't mention anything else, did they? Let's go back to the top of the article. I don't believe they mentioned any others. Uh, that's not that bit there. Oh, jeez. Bear with me, guys. Uh, the War Horde, Green Tide, or is it okay, so yeah, so we've still got, uh, ah, Beast Snagger Hunting Party, there you go, they didn't um, put it in bold black, but there you go, that's got to be the sixth one, hasn't it, the Beast Snagger, so what have we got, Dread Mob, we've got uh, Cult of Speed, we've got the Green Tide, the War Horde, the Bully Boys, and the Beast Snagger Hunting Party, by the look of it. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, no Grot Detachment. That sucks. It's a shame we haven't got that. Um, that is a real shame. That's that's something that we really could have done with. Um, it would have had to call have like a Rebel Grot Detachment. Um, but, yeah. Really, really cool. Overall, I'm excited about this stuff. Like I said, there is sad news in that um, certain units are being dropped from the Codex and will become Legends units. Um, I, I appreciate that some of you out there are going to find this like, sad news and things, but I would encourage you to really think about how you play your games and stuff. And if you're not going into tournaments and stuff, just use Legends, guys. Use Legends, and then none of this affects you. Um, as long as the gaming group that you're with allows this, um, and hopefully they would, um, and if they don't, then choose a new gaming group, um, because um, I would encourage everyone out there to carry on using the units they like. But look, on the whole, I'm excited for this. It's coming out very, very soon. Um, are you excited about it? What detachment are you most excited about? Share down in the comment section below, please, guys. For me, it's clearly the Dread Mob detachment. Um, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun using those special rules. I'm excited to see what the rest of the stratagems are, what the rest of the enhancements are, and uh, seeing what they do to a lot of the data cards. I think a lot of the data cards will be changing somewhat. Um, some things could get buffed and improved and, and changed and tweaked. It's going to be really, really interesting to see um, where they're going with this. Um, but yeah, guys, for now, um, that's it from me. Thank you very much for joining me. And this is Six Plus Stevo, signing out.